Did you know that California is currently working on America's first full-scale high-speed rail line to connect San Francisco and Los Angeles? Once finished, this rail line will cut the usual six-hour drive between these cities down to just under three hours by high-speed train. However, it's worth noting that this ambitious project is facing some serious challenges. Despite initial projections, it's now three years behind schedule and almost $100 billion over budget. In fact, the project is still a whole decade away from completion. In this video, we'll explore the intricacies of America's most expensive infrastructure endeavor and uncover what led to these setbacks. If you find these insights intriguing, consider subscribing to our channel and helping us reach our 1 million subscriber milestone. Why is it being built? First, let's understand why they're building the California high-speed rail. California is a very rich and crowded state. It's so wealthy that if it were a country, it would have the fifth largest economy in the world. There are almost 40 million people living in California, which is more than the whole country of Canada. Most of the money and people are in two main areas by the coast, San Francisco Bay and Greater Los Angeles. These two big cities have more than half of the state's people, but getting between them has always been a problem. It takes about six hours to drive from San Francisco to Los Angeles, and both cities have really bad traffic. The only other choice is a 90-minute flight between the two cities, but it's expensive and not great for the environment. So in 1996, they started a project called the California High Speed Rail Authority to create a faster, cheaper, and more eco-friendly way to travel. In 2008, they put the plans up for a vote all over California, and 53% of the voters said yes to building the high-speed rail. They also approved $9 billion to start building it. Phase 1. The plan for the California high-speed rail had two parts. The first part aimed to connect San Francisco and Los Angeles through the Central Valley, passing through cities like Merced, Fresno, and Bakersfield. This track would be about 800 kilometers long and go through some very hilly areas like Tehachapi when traveling from Bakersfield to Palmdale and Pacheco Pass when going from Gilroy to Merced. In these hilly spots, they need at least 24 kilometers of tunnels. The first part of the plan also included improving the existing commuter rail system in San Francisco. They wanted to make it work with both the new high-speed trains and the older local commuter trains creating a kind of mixed system. Phase two, the second part of the plan was to make the high-speed rail go even farther. It would go up to Sacramento, the capital of California in the north, and down to San Diego near the border with Mexico in the south. This expansion would make the whole high-speed rail system 1,300 kilometers long with 24 stations along the way. Back then, the whole project was expected to cost $33 billion. They hoped to have the California high-speed rail ready by 2020, and it would let people travel from San Francisco to Los Angeles in just 2 hours and 40 minutes, going as fast as 350 kilometers per hour. This project had a lot of good things going for it. It would help reduce pollution and carbon emissions in California, because more people would choose the greener option of taking the high-speed train instead of flying. It would also make travel better by reducing air and road traffic, making it quicker to get between the two cities. But perhaps most importantly, it would create many job opportunities and connect the people in the Central Valley to the state's centers of business, bringing them economic benefits. What went wrong? All of this sounds fantastic, but where did things go wrong? It's been 15 years since Californians voted for the high-speed rail back in 2008, and things have changed a lot they've run into a lot of problems related to money, laws, and the environment. The 2020 deadline they had in mind is way behind us now, and the project's future isn't clear anymore. A big issue from the start was that the California High Speed Rail Authority never really had enough money to build the whole thing. Funding problems. Back in 2008, when they gave the green light to the project, they only had $9 billion out of the estimated $33 billion needed to build the whole thing. They thought the rest of the money would come from different sources. The federal government was supposed to chip in with $12.16 billion, public-private partnerships would bring in $6.7.5 billion, and local governments were expected to provide $2.3 billion. But the problem was, most of the money was supposed to come from Washington, D.C., however, 
two years after the 2008 vote, Congress had only given $3 billion out of the $16 billion they were supposed to provide. Now the cost of just the first part of the project, which connects Los Angeles to San Francisco, has gone up a lot. It might cost as much as $128 billion because of rising costs for building materials and inflation. With little help from the federal government, it's not clear where they'll get the money to finish the project. Even though the project has gotten a lot more expensive, they've already spent almost $10 billion on legal and construction costs. They've also built a bunch of infrastructure like bridges and tunnels in key parts of the route. Besides the money problems, the way the legal system works in America is also causing lots of delays for the project. California has strict environmental rules, and just getting permission to build something this big is a huge task on its own. The process to clear the project environmentally has already cost the developers $1.3 billion from their already limited budget. Downsizing of the project Since the original 2020 deadline is long gone, they had to change the plans for the California high-speed rail because they ran into money problems. Instead of building the whole route from Los Angeles to San Francisco, they are now focusing on a smaller part, from Merce to Bakersfield. They picked this section because it's the cheapest part to build. The land between Merced and Bakersfield is mostly flat rural farmland, which makes it easier for the project to buy and develop. They hope to finish building this smaller segment by 2033 at the latest, and it's the top priority for the project's developers right now. Once it's done, people can use regular trains to go from Merced to San Jose, Sacramento, or San Francisco. On the other end, in Bakersfield, they can take buses to get to Los Angeles and the rest of Southern California. By building only this part first, people will be able to travel between San Francisco and Los Angeles, even though the rest of the high-speed tracks aren't finished yet. Once they finish the Merced to Bakersfield part, they'll start working on the tracks going to Los Angeles and San Francisco, finally completing the original phase one of the construction. But it's still not clear when this will happen because they don't have enough money. As for the original phase two of the project, which would have extended the tracks north to Sacramento and south to San Diego, it's only in the early planning stages and there's no definite timeline or details about when they'll start building it. What do Californians think? What do people in California think about all of this? Well, many folks are pretty skeptical because the high-speed rail project has turned out to be very expensive and full of delays. Some folks don't think it's a good idea, even with the new plan for the smaller segment. They're not sure if people will actually use it. In fact, the route from Merce to Bakersfield is often called the train to nowhere by the media because those cities have small populations, with only 90,000 and 400,000 people, respectively. A big problem is the lack of money, which has always been a major issue for the project. And it got worse when the Trump administration took away over $900 million in funding because they thought the project wasn't making reasonable progress in construction. Critics also point to things like overly optimistic predictions about how many people will use the train, the costs going up, and problems with getting the land they need for the project as more reasons to be against it. Current progress and future. However, many people are still hopeful about the project's future, considering what's already been achieved. They cleared the environmental hurdles for 680 out of the total 800 kilometers of the entire project, and they plan to clear the whole route by the end of 2023. Right now, they're building about 190 kilometers in the Bakersfield to Merced route, and they've made good progress since they started in 2015. By October 2022, around 40% of the rail guideways have been completed, including significant crossings like the San Joaquin and Fresno River viaducts. The project has also created 10,000 jobs, with many workers coming from the Central Valley, which is an area with a lot of poverty and unmet needs. People there hope that when the project is finished, it will bring economic growth and open up opportunities for millions of folks in the region. Apart from the social and economic advantages, the new administration led by Joe Biden is more supportive of rail infrastructure compared to the previous Trump administration. This gives the project a better chance of getting the federal funds it needs. What do you think about the California High Speed Rail project? Do you believe America is ready for high speed rail? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.